Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, like a realm reborn, Heaven's Sword also has when you have all your beast tribes at maximum, that is Blood Sworn for the three. There is a quest line which binds the three beast tribes together. And that begins here in Idleshire from Dry Dogs. When good dragons go bad. Dry Dogs has a message for you from an old friend. Uplander comes at perfect time. Deft Arm was just here looking for Uplander. Something about new busy deals that Deft Arm would be making? Busy deals for which Deft Arm is needing Uplander's aid. Must be big busy deals, thinks Dry Dogs, because Deft Arm was running here and there like wild wildebeest. Uplander is master to Deft Arm, yes? Uplander should make quickly to village of walkie bucks help people. And so it begins, we go to the Varf. Warf, deft arm. Click, click. Master, you return and not a moment too soon. I have come upon a tremendous opportunity to further expand our adventure guild and I would seek your aid in seeking it to fruition. I was consulting with the Dauphine some days ago and she spoke to me of another tribe that might benefit from our services. I believe she called them Moogles? M Muggles? Um, M Muggles? Muggles? Um, something like that at least. As she told it, these furry creatures make their home in the churning mists, where they now toil day and night to rebuild a great ancient plaza with the aid of dragons and men. Surely such an industrious tribe would have much in common with myself and my compatriots? Very much indeed. Yes, I simply must make the acquaintance of these, um, what were they called again? Moogles. Ah oh, yes, Moogles. I trust but a great adventurer like yourself is on good terms with these Moogles, Master. You will introduce me to them, yes? Click, click. A thousand thank yous, Master. The success of our guild has brought much prosperity to our colony, but a true hero does not rest on his laurels. This is a lesson I've learned from observing you, Master. Yes, one of many. Master and students striking out on adventure once more. My heart pounds in anticipation. Let us make for the churning mists without delay. I shall race you there. Okay. Click. I have never been above a Klaus before, Master. The sight is simply breathtaking. So breathtaking. That said, these Moogles are curious creatures. How do they sh stay airborne on such tiny wings? And what other purpose do those glowing spheres attach to their heads of? Uh, but cu very curious indeed. At any rate, if they are in need of an adventurer, I am happy to offer them my aid. Speak with Master Moxin. Hello, Moxin. I want to int introduce you to someone. Kopopo? You would introduce to us a pupil of yours, you say? I thought I was the only pupil. Could it be that I'm not as special as I thought I was? Not a pupil in the art of crafting, but of adventurer. Um, and like myself, he's not of your kind. A color me confused, but if this pupil of yours can help to lighten our load, I see no reason to refuse his aid, Kupo. Kupopo, whatever have you here? Those hard scales, those claws, that puny body? Are you some kind of lesser dragon, Kupo? Click, click. I'm no dragon, and I'm certainly not lesser. I'm the deft arm of loss. Asked Vaf, an adventurer come to offer my services, in return for due recompense. I will perform any task you desire, no matter how perilous. What say you, my Moogle friend? Kopopo, you don't look like any adventurer I've ever seen, but art workers are always welcome in Mokom. That said, we are a community of builders. If you lack like crafting skill, I feel I can only offer you menial tasks, collecting rubbish, cracking coupons, etc. It's not a glamorous job, but uh, someone has to do it, Kupo. Hmm. 
Click, click. Collecting. Uh, very well. Consider your coupon as good as cracked. Did you see how quickly I agreed to take on these tedious tasks? I've taken a liking to this one already. We have to prepare a very special welcome for his return. In true Moogle fashion. Uh, but I almost forgot. Tarasen wanted to work with you, Desiree. Why don't you pay him a visit? Now I must be off to prepare a special surprise for our new friend. Yeah. That means a prank, right? I'm worried about left arm. Ah, Desiree. It is a pleasure to see you again. I see that it is not merely the Moogles and the Dragons who hold you in the highest esteem. Yes, I knew we were different from the moment I first laid eyes upon you. If you will indulge this old man once more, there is a small favor I would ask of you as well. It concerns our mutual friend all day. It would seem Golem Bursty has taken him under his tutelage in hopes of teaching him to war like a mighty dragon. But the little one's efforts have yet to bear fruit. I tried to reason with him. Why, by its own admission, even the greatest of drags often need a hundred years to muster their strength, but the stubbornet will have nothing of it. He insisted that he could not afford to wait. For you see, he means to show off his war to his dear friend Moxin, and he has recently learned that Moogles are not blessed with a longevity of dragons. He made me promise to keep this a secret from Moxin, but he said nothing of you. Might you be so kind as to offer him a few words of encouragement? I'm certain it would carry more weight coming from a brave adventurer than a mere artisan such as myself. Oh, Desiree, what brings you to Palais? Uh, let me guess, you too have come to watch a puny, pathetic old day bring disgrace and dishonor to the name of dragons everywhere? Uh. Old day is clearly not his typical confident self. Mayhap there is something you might do to lift the dragonette spirit? Really? Come on all day. It's not that bad. You can do it. I'm certain of it. <laughs> oh, that's right. But of course you speak the truth. A proud dragon does not stew and sulk when there's work to be done. Just watch. The next time we meet, my war will be as mighty as that of Raceville guy himself. I do hope Golden Bursty is not cross with me for running off. Old days back to his old self, you say. It warms with old man's heart to hear it. I knew I chose the right last for the job. Truly, you stand as a model to dragon, moogle and man alike. Speaking of which, your pupil has yet to return from his task. I'm sure you won't be much longer, but in the meantime I dare say you earned yourself a rest. Why not warm yourself by the fire while we wait? Okay, let's rest. We do that so early. Click, click. My arms act fiercely, very fiercely. I thought I had long since left this shell breaking busy work behind, but it would seem that only crafters are trusted with important tasks in this place. Do not ask me, mind you, what those important tasks might be. We smuggled spend more time flying about and pulling each other's palms than doing anything resembling actual labor. But forgive me my grabbing, Master. I will go report to Master Moxen. Click, click. I'm done with my task. The works that lit at your plaza will plague you no more and your cuponuts are cracked and fit for consumption. You have nothing to say? I said that I picked up your damn. Those accursed rocks and cracked every last coupon. Every last one. Yep. Surprise! Did my oh so clever creation fool you? Your exasperated expression tells me that it did, Kubo. I planted a 
fur, hair, by, hair and added a few tufts of cloud mallow to make a palm float. I dare say it's as lifelike as I am, Kupo. The only difference is the hammer in its hand. But no one notices, Kupo. Yes, I can say without a doubt that this will go down in Moogle history as one of Moxen's most prodigious pranks ever. Oh, and good work, by the way. Next time we have some rubbish that needs picking up or Kupo nuts that need cracking with the shirt, we will first one we call Kupo. I, I've never been so insulted in my life. I toil and trudge from dawn into dust for you, and you will pay me with this mockery? I take umbrage of this. Great umbrage. Whatever's the matter? Surely you have heard that it's through clever pranks with the Moogle show our appreciation and affection for our fur. Enough! I came here to lend my aid as an adventurer, not play errand boy for a group of slackers who wouldn't know hard work if it came up and ripped those ridiculous pumps off their heads. Slackers, Kubo? I'll have you know that we mock men as have restored Barless to a glory not seen in generations. You take that back, Kubo. Take it back this instant. Friends, you must come quickly. Golden Bursty has gone mad. What? He nearly torched an unwitty temple knight. I scarcely escape with my own life. What is this? A dragon seized by anger boats ill indeed. Come, Desiree. Moxen, we must look into this at once. An angry dragon? I... I but no, a deft arm will not falter. Wherever you go, master, I will follow. Lead the way. Really grown up. Never before have I sensed such anger, such rage. We urge to run consumes me, but I must resist. Why not? The man got the breath knocked out of him, but he yet lives. Have mercy, Colin Bursty. I promise to be a better student from now on. What's the meaning of this, Golden Burst? You promised to keep our last safe from harm. Now we will turn against us and our friends, Kubo? Have mercy, Golden Burst. Surely these men and moogles have done nothing to incur your ire. Something is greatly amiss. I see naught but pure animal rage in the dragon's eyes. Please stop this Golden Burst yet, back of you! Thank you, my friends. I owe you my life. What in the name of the good king happened here, Kupo? I'm not entirely sure myself. I had just arrived to see Gullen Berthi's wisdom concerning the restoration effort, but all of a sudden we are set upon by a masked man burnishing an imposing firearm. Golden Bursty was struck by a bullet in the course of a battle, after which the man made a swift retreat. Just when I thought we were safe, a dragon turned upon me with a terrifying gaze and unleashed a mighty war. The next thing I knew, I was lying right where you found me. Inconceivable. The Golden Bursty I know would never act with such mental savagery. This mask of silence you speak of did something to our friend. I just know it. I see that he suffers for his deed. Calm yourself all day. If we put our pumps together, we'll get to the bottom of this in no time. Now, why don't the two of us go in search of Golden Bursty Kubo? Not so fast, my dear Moxen. We must tend to this man's wounds, and besides, it would be unwise to dash off without forming a proper plan of attack. Let us return to Barless for the moment and consider our next course of action with due care. I cannot say for sure that Madness has taken Gullen Bursty, but it bodes ill for our well-being here. We must take action swiftly. Yet first we must need to formulate a plan. 
Hey Vic, this is a troubling development indeed. But we'll get through this, won't we, Master? After all, we are adventurers, are we not? Yes, adventurers we are. The madness in those eyes. That was not the Golem Bursky I know. That Marksman is behind this somehow. I'm certain of it. Well, one thing is clear. This is no time to be beginning among ourselves, Gubom. We must put our palms together and figure out what has become of Golem Bursty. Indeed, indeed. I refuse to accept that he turned on us of his own accord. We must find him and free him from his madness. Indeed, we must, little one, and yet we must also find out precisely what fate has befallen our friend and what we might do to cure him, lest any future encounters prove perilous indeed. I, I believe our first course of action should be to track down this mask of silent, that we might ascertain the truth behind all that has transpired. Wise counsel indeed. And yet that sounds positively perilous prospect in its own right, Kubo. Who might we know that would be up to the task? Uh, Death Army. Who was the mask man? That's where I beseech the aid of you and your deft armed disciple, Kupo. Pray pursue this mask marauder and find out the truth behind the madness that has taken Golden Bursi. Click. Now this is a task worthy of an adventurer. Mark my words, my Mughal friend. Master and I will track down this mysterious and dangerous foe. A thousand thousand thank yous, Kupo. Might I suggest that you start by asking around here in Barles? Perhaps some of them have heard or seen anything of a man we seek. As for myself and all day, we will see that we m what we might learn about Golden Bursty's current whereabouts. Tarrison, better trouble you to watch over the plaza while we are away? You would suggest that a greybeard like myself can offer naught else to your cause? <laughs> oh, but I jest. Uh, rest assured that you will find not a single stone out of place on your return. Go in safety, friend Moxon. At last, Master, a task worthy of our skills. Let us split up, see what we can learn about this masked villain. I shall question the Moogles in this area. Would you be so kind as to speak to those gathered around the fountain? We can meet up here when our tasks are done. Share what we have learned. There's a quavering Moogle. Did you see a masked man, you asked? Uh, did I ever? He strode in, banishing that fearsome firearm of his and started picking off lesser dragons left and right. When, when, when the coast was clear, he dashed off toward old Golden Bursty's place. Why didn't I follow him? I prefer my palm attached to my hat, thank you very much. If you're going after him, I'd encourage you to be very, very careful. I don't know what he's up to, but I assure you, it's no good. Kubo. Garrulous Temple Knight. A masked man. Sure, I saw him. Exchange a few words with him for that matter. Asked if I knew of any particularly ancient, formidable dragons in the area. So I directed him to Gullen Bursty. Gullen Bursty's been attacked, you say? The few attacked me. I do hope it wasn't my fault. I see, so it would seem this Masked Marauder set his sights on Gullen Bursty for his power and persons. Interesting, very interesting. From my own questioning, I have learned that our quarry has since been sighted in some isle. It would seem he has already left the churning mists behind. We must give chase, yes, and return to the surface. On the way, I would pay a brief visit to Love Astvarf. I would share this news with a storyteller and see what wisdom he might share with us. And with that, let us see who selects her faster. I shall waste you, Bear Master. Unfair, you are crest marker. This is not a fair race.
Click, click. The deft arm, I have not seen him. Could it be that the one mind once again calls out to him? But no. Even well, so that one's mind has grown too strong. Still, I worry. Pray find him that our minds may rest easy. Dry dog. And Nav. Rydox was hunting for Nanka eggs, when Walkie Box, calling himself a one mind, sneaky stepped up from behind, started shooting their shooty sticks. Deft Arm came, saved Drydox from becoming Hooli Cheese. Click, click. Forgive me, Master. On my way to Lothar's Wharf, I found Drydox here in distress, surrounded by the one mind. I did only what any adventurer would do. What any adventurer must do. Just said that. There was something strange about these one mind master. They were not the one mind I know. The one mind you have seen, you too have seen. They strike with perfect precision, but these ones they set upon us with a savage and almost uncontrollable rage. Strange, very strange. Now that Defton mentions it, Drydox heard sound before Walkie Bucks attacked. It went boom! But it was not a boom of walkie buck shooty stick. No. No, it was much, much scarier. Drydox heard it from the forest as well. You have it, Master? There can be no doubt of it. Our quarry is up to something here as well. We must take to the forest. Yes, to tail feather. Worry not. I will tell the storyteller that we are safe from harm. Please go visit Marsh Camp and see if all is well. I will join you with all speed. Deftar looks as happy as Drydox does when she finds a trove of Nanka eggs. Drydox is ha happy for Deftarm, but worries for his safety. A blender will be careful too, yes? Oh, look who's back. What brings you to tell our friend? That Deftarm got you on another wild chocolate chase, I reckon? We chase something far more frightful than chocobos, Master Camp. I come on behalf of the Moogles of Mokholm. I ask you, have you encountered a masked man brandishing a gun in this forest? Right, I have indeed, as much as I'd like to say otherwise. See, the man's been making quite a name for himself in these parts, and it ain't a good one. I had the misfortune of running into him myself not hours ago. He came here, you say? Where did he go? You must tell me, Master Camp. I must know. Listen to me, Deft Ahmed. Listen well. If you know what's good for you, you'll walk out of here the way you came and forgot anything and everything you ever heard or saw about that man. The man you're after is an adventurer, but not one of the nice ones like your master here. Aye, he's nothing short of the most ruthless assassin our realm has ever seen. A cold-blooded killer who's never met a job too dirty or too dangerous for his liking. No one he has failed to carry out with lethal perfection. An adventurer, you say? Why, who better to pursue this man than Master and myself? Yes, this is our duty. Our calling. Did you hear a single bloody word? I Sometimes I don't know why I bloody try. Why not, Master Camp? Your words of warning, I have not fallen on deaf ears. But I'm a deaf arm, and I must do what needs to be done. Is that not so, Master? <laughs> if you're itching to get your head blown off your shoulder, we might to stop you. Your man was last seen heading for the western highlands of Corfus. Just don't come crying to me when the hunter becomes so hunted. Click, click. Thank you, friend. And why not? Between Master and myself, we will be more than a match for this masked menace. Mind you, Master, I do not wish to rely over much on your aid. I accepted this job from the Mughals and I intend to see it done with my own hand. That said... I would ask you to accompany me for or, um, moral support. You understand, yes? Excellent. And that, let us be off to Carthus. Perhaps our friend Gentilord will have some news for us upon our arrival. Yes, surely he will.
just between you and me, that's the way. That man is dangerous, no doubting that. But so long as you stick by the deft arm's side, I reckon the two of you will come out of it with no more than a couple of scratches. Just don't let your guard down, eh? And the convictory. Okay, gentle lord. Ah, tis you. And forgive me, but the pressing matter requires my undivided attention at the moment. If you need something of me, pray return on the morrow. Rick, please listen, gentlemen. For a pressing matter requires our attention as well. Yes, very pressing. On behalf of the Mughals of Mokholm, we have come to Karthas in pursuit of a certain adventurer. He wears a mask on his face and wields a pistol in his hand. Have you seen such a man? Seen him, you say? Ha! Aye, I caught a glimpse. I arrived just in time to see him nigh blast that of one of my loyal men before commandeering our brand new mana cutter and flying off in it to the few he knows there. You will forgive me if I'm somewhat on edge. We scrimped and saved what little coin we could muster and waited moons on end until this vessel was available, only to see it spirited away from us the self same day, all while I could do nothing but look on like a helpless half wit. At least I emerged from the episode unscathed, which is more than I can say for my subordinate. Serves him right, though. Maybe when his wounds seal, he think twice before picking a fight with a hardened criminal in a Calum tree wine induced stupor. You heard me right. Ridiculous mask or no, that man isn't one to be trifled with. I know not how well these Moogles are paying you, but I highly doubt that the reward is worth your life. Dilek, this is not a matter of coin, but one of trust and duty. What is an adventurer worth if his word counts for nothing? Nothing, I say. Yes, the deft arm will see this job done. Now tell me, which way did the masked man go? <laughs> you have spirit, I give you that. Adventuring sounds to be a thankless job, but I wish you the best in it. Your man and my mana cutter were last sighted heading for the Sea of Clouds. To try to stay alive, won't you? Click, click. Thank you, friend, and worry not for me. The Death Arm has the courage and conviction of a hundred of your men. We will see this merciless marauder brought to justice. <laughs> click, click. You don't suppose this masked man truly is as dangerous as your friends suggest, do you, master? I cannot help but feel like they are underestimating our abilities. Anyhow, let us confirm private and form a plan of attack. Looking at the time, I think I just end the episode here, and we continue this next time. Until then, I'm Mace and... Don't get lost.